Good morning. Welcome to North Springfield Presbyterian Church. Uh, just uh, another reminder about uh, humming or not singing out loud or just contemplating behind your mask as the uh, hymns are sung. Uh, do we have any announcements other than I know Jan has one? Any announcements to make today? Good morning. Um, may the God of peace give you peace at all times in all ways. On World Communion Sunday, we celebrate that Christ's peace extends throughout all creation. We celebrate that we're all together at the communion table in God's house. We celebrate that we are offered what we need to continue the work of building the household of God with active peacemakers here at home and around the world. Extending the peace of Christ is part of an active, engaged faith, a witness to what it means for us to be the church together. Peacemaking is active, not passive. Peacemaking is doing, not waiting. Through participation in the Peace and Global Witness offering, our church is extending Christ's peace throughout our community and our world. We begin at the communion table with our siblings in every time and place, and we celebrate the peace we find there and commit to building God's house of peace where all are welcome, where all can find compassion, peace, and justice. Sunday, September 18th, we'll receive the Peace and Global Witness offering. 25% of the offering stays with our local congregation. 25% is used to in the presbytery to unite congregations to support peacemaking in those in our regions and 50 percent of the offering supports the work for peace and reconciliation being done by presbyterians around the globe in baltimore maryland the hunting ridge presbyterian church used their share of the offering to promote anti-violence programs in their schools the central presbyterian church in dayton ohio use their share to send a delegate to the World Presbyterian Peace Fellowship in Columbia to participate in conversations about the progress of the peace accords in areas of the nation wracked by revolution. The Presbytery of the Pacific supports efforts to bring about change for low-wage workers and other vul vulnerable community members in the Los Angeles area. Our gifts to the Peace and Global Witness offering have also been combined with others to help end the forced inscription of child soldiers, to end gender-based violence and violence against women, to seek peace through nuclear disarmament, to end hunger and promote peacemaking in places like Madagascar and Rwanda. With our gifts, we are part of all these efforts, whether they're right here in Akron or in places that we've never seen and may never see. But these are all places that have one thing in common, the need for freedom and dignity that Christ wants for us all. Let us offer the peace of Christ at all times, in all ways. We are the church together. We are peacemakers together. We are the builders of God's household of peace together. And when together we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. And related to the Peace and Global Witness offering, I draw your attention to the artwork on the wall over there, which uh, Jill spent many hours working on. And the result is, as you see, that very beautiful poster on the wall up there. Uh, now would everyone please rise for the call to worship. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The The 
fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. God's law is indeed perfect. God's decrees are sure and precepts right. Yet in our sin and finitude, we fall short and fail to follow God's commandments. Nonetheless, the Lord is gracious, merciful, and abounding in steadfast, steadfast love. Confident that God's promises are true, God's character unchanging, we dare to confess our sin in order that we might be forgiven from the past we cannot change and freed for God's good future. Let us pray. 
Lord, Lord as we prepare to break the bread and drink from the cup, we cannot help but hesitate to partake of your body and blood. We remember your punishment to go and be reconciled to our siblings before coming to your table. We recognize how we have been damned the flames of division rather than prepared the breach between us. We know we cannot make evident our unity in you. Our oneness made possible through your sacrifice. Too many of your children do not have a place at the table, do not have enough to eat, are relegated to beg for crumbs when you command us to offer radical and abundant hospitality. In your relentless mercy, forgive us, free us from fear, God refuses to give up on us. God restores us. God sent the only Son to save us. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, believe the good news through Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Uh, as this time you can uh, in any way want to uh, communicate the peace of Christ, waving or indicating to your neighbors. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. Loving God, do not leave us in the dark to guess your will, but instead send the light Send the light no darkness can overcome to reveal your way and illuminate our understanding. Send our spirit so that we will have the ears to hear what you are saying to your church. Amen. Today's uh, scripture reading is from Acts, and it uh, recounts an interaction between an angel and Philip, uh, an early disciple of Jesus. But an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. And he rose and went, and behold, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a minister of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to worship and was returning. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which he was reading was this. As a sheep led to the slaughter, or a lamb before its shearer is dumb, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken up from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, pray, does the prophet say this? About himself? or about someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news of Jesus. As they went along the road, they came to, to the, some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What is it to prevent my being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they, come up, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught up Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing on, he preached the gospel to all the towns till he came to Caesarea, the words of the Lord.
got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got love like an ocean I got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean soul You know I've got joy like a fountain I've got joy like a fountain I got joy like a fountain in my soul I got joy like a fountain I got joy like a fountain I've got joy in my soul I've got peace like a river I got peace like a river I got peace like a river in my soul I got peace like a river Um, would you all pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Be the guide upon each of our hearts as we meditate on your word today. Gently lead us to be conduits of your healing grace. Be with us as each of us encounters your word in a new way today. Teach us what it is you want us to know. And let anything that would keep us from you float away with the wind. At least we pray trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Several years ago, I was a chaperone for a middle school mission trip. And I was an anxious, a very anxious chaperone with these middle schoolers. They stressed me out because they had these little minds of their own. And the fun, after the mission work, after we like helped with this um, project in a, um, a, a small community in uh, Appalachia, um, the, the fun part of the trip was whitewater rafting. I am not a water sports girl. I never have been. Water, when I don't know like where the bottom of it is, really scares me. Um, so I, you know, I'm the chaperone, so I had to put on this brave face for these kids. Um, and when you, some of you may have been whitewater rafting before, or maybe even heard me like um, freak out about it. Um, but I get in this raft with these middle schoolers, and I'm. T I'm I'm telling them now, if any of you falls out of this raft, you need to listen to what the guide person says. 
and you don't fight against the water, you just go with it, and you kick your feet up, and you just float, and you let the water take you, and you will be okay, because we will help you. And they're all like, oh, Miss Laura, we got it, it's fine, just enjoy. And I'm like, okay, but I'm still watching every single one of them, like my eyes will keep them in this raft. And then we hit the (laughs) the first rapid, And they're all fine, but I go flying out of the raft. And I'm thinking the irony of this situation, but I remember what I'm supposed to do. And when that happens in these kinds of waters, all you do is you, like I said, kick your feet up and you let the water carry you until someone can kind of pick you up by the life jacket and pull you back into the boat. Which is what my tour guide, what the raft guide did. And I get back on this boat and I'm just very scared. And these kids are laughing at how funny it was to watch me fly out of this boat. And I just accept that uh, sometimes it's okay to let go and let the waters carry you. I say that today especially because When I have experienced the Holy Spirit in its most bountiful form, it happens in the way that it's already happened this morning. I prepare sermons and liturgy each week, and Rob prepares the music But today, especially when he started to sing, I've got peace like a river, we didn't coordinate the story I was about to share, the emphasis that I felt leading me to speak about the spirit. But it happened because the Holy Spirit is present in this place and the Holy Spirit will bring us together in ways we can't even comprehend. We have that spirit within us like a river. When I was younger and I was first learning to engage with what the Holy Spirit meant and how to comprehend its its power and its gentleness, but also its It's ushering of us. One of my mentors looked at me and said, Laura, if you're in the middle of waters that are moving you, you don't want to stand still and fight it. You don't want to swim against the current. But instead they looked at me and they said, go with the flow of the river. Let it guide you. Let it take you to where it naturally flows. They looked at me, young in my faith, and said, that is like how the Holy Spirit works. It will take you where you need to go. But we have to let go of our inner voices that tell us to fight against it, to plant our feet so that we don't move with it. Those things are inevitably human, but we can learn to allow the Spirit to guide us. In today's scripture, we see this. The Acts of the Apostles and the early work of Christians we see that Philip hears from the Spirit of the Lord through the angels of the Lord. We can look to Philip for examples of how to listen and receive and go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. You see, when the angel of the Lord says to Philip, rise up and go, Philip doesn't say, I don't really have time for that. I kind of have an appointment later and I, no. It says, and he rose and he went. 
when the Spirit of the Lord says to join the chariot, where the Ethiopian eunuch is reading scriptures, Philip doesn't say, that is someone who's not like me. I don't want to talk to someone who's not like me, who doesn't look like me, who doesn't think like me. What am I going to say to them? No. What does Philip do? Philip runs to the chariot. Philip asks, do you understand what you're reading? And immediately is invited into a relationship that transcends differences, but is grounded by the Holy Spirit. Some definitions are helpful here. Why does it matter that this, why does the scripture name who is in the chariot without naming the person? In the chariot, we have an Ethiopian eunuch. That's two descriptors to show how very different of a social strata this person is in from Philip. In contemporary usage today, we know the word eunuch, and we, we claim it to be defined as a castrated man. But in times like from the times of scripture, it actually has a much broader definition. A eunuch served and guarded women who were in royal and wealthy households. And to ensure that they would not be sexually involved with the women, they were supposed to protect, charged to protect. Many of them were indeed uh, castrated men, intersex folk, um, and they were trusted, in, trusted officials who rose to higher positions in government in protecting these very um, highly stratified people in government. So you see, we have this person who is set apart, a person who isn't necessarily like Philip or the people that Philip is normally around. But the Holy Spirit compels and ushers Philip forward to build and form a relationship that doesn't deny differences, but instead says, through all of this, Shall we discuss the scriptures that you are reading? The spirit is at work and Philip is going along with the spirit. All Philip does as he sits with this eunuch is he opens his mouth and the interpretations of the Spirit fall upon him. It's just what we do each week as we gather. Before we have the reading of the scripture and before we have the proclamation of the word, we pray together. Holy Spirit, illuminate our minds that we might receive what it is you are trying to teach us today. Friends, the Spirit is at work in this place. What is it the Spirit is teaching you today? And the Spirit in this scripture follows this journey of this unlikely relationship. And all of a sudden they come along a body of water. And it says that the eunuch says, see, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And Philip doesn't say, oh, well, X, Y, and Z, these are the rules, and uh, that's the way it is. No, they go down to the water together. They go into the waters of baptism, and they rise together. We talk often about how our identities and our baptism connect us as a community and connect us to the world of people. We believe in one baptism that makes us a family bonded by the Holy Spirit, bonded by the grace of Christ who washes us clean 
and renews our spirits. This goes beyond any distinctions we create in our hearts. We come here into this place and the spirit is at work. When we come in this place, we remember that we exist in a time and place that tries every day to further polarize us from one another. And the spirit says, come together, be washed by the waters, break the bread, share the cup. We are one community with many differences united by the grace of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us without any condition, who dies and rises from death for us, no matter what, no matter what we look like, no matter how much money we have, no matter what we believe politically, no matter what, the grace of Christ is for us, and we find it at this table. We find it in the scripture, in the examples of this unlikely bond that brings people to the waters of baptism. Things have certainly been different this year for our congregation. Typically during this World Communion Sunday, we have a practice in this church at least. And I just wanna name it because I know we're all missing it. In normal times, we would all bring forward a, a type of bread. Some of us would bring some form of international bread and we would place it on the table and it would pile up in baskets, all different kinds of bread. It's my favorite smelling service because you can just smell all the types of bread. There's always so much. And then we, after we partake in communion, what happens usually in this congregation is that we then carry the bread back to fellowship and we break it apart and we share it, or sometimes we take whole loaves home because there's just so much bread. It's a different year. Our table doesn't look like that in order to protect so that we aren't having a lot of exchange of different breads. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit would illumine your memory of what World Communion Sunday looks and feels like and how the Spirit is asking you to let go and flow with the, with the rivers of peace. To let go and listen to how the Spirit is asking you to partake. And even with these smaller morsels of bread and cup that we are individually participating in, that even the smallest prayer for the peace of the world can move mountains if we just trust, kick up our stubborn feet and allow the river to carry us. Let us be washed by these waters and reconnected to one another and to God. Amen.
please remain standing as able and join me in the affirmation of faith. There is one hope, one calling to which we are called. The hope in our lives is Jesus. There is one hope, one calling to which we are called. The call we must answer is God's. There is one faith, one hope, one Lord of us all. The Lord of our lives is Jesus. There is one baptism, one creator of all. The creator who calls us is God. We are one body, one family, one church, woven by the spirit with bonds of peace. With Christ's children throughout all of this earth, we are one body in unity and love. You may be seated. If you filled out a pink form today, would you raise your hand? I didn't receive any. Okay, um, Jean's going to grab it from there, but um, if you wanted to say it out loud, that's fine. Uh, Pat Harper is going to go into assisted living on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, she will be at the, and I wrote it down, I forgot it, and I wrote it down. Uh, I need to be there with her. <laughs> but it's out in green. Okay. When it's she goes green. in, she'll be there for two weeks quarantine, so nobody oh can gosh. see her. Uh, after that, then I think every week it's different, so I'm not sure what's going to happen after the two weeks, but I know no one's allowed to visit her for two weeks. Where she's going. Okay. But I'll, I'll get the phone number or the address and Make sure Lori gets it so she can let everybody know. Absolutely. So I'll repeat that into the mic so that people in the cars can be praying too. Um, these are prayers lifted for Pat Harper, who is um, going to move into assisted living at, it looks like, gale, galleys of green. Okay. <laughs> um, but we will receive information on phone numbers and address to update our records in case people want to send cards um, but please be praying for that transition as um, currently the, um, the guidelines at this particular assisted living is that she will be quarantined for two weeks. Um, very limited strict visitation likely afterwards, but we don't know because um, as you all know, time is changing and every day is a different um, rule with the coronavirus. So please add Pat Harper to your prayer lists, and together we will pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there any other prayer concerns today? Okay. Then let us move to the litany of the prayers of the people. Lord, as we gather around this wonderful meal, everywhere and in every place, Bless us, all your children. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, linking arms around the world, pour your grace into us all. Grace us with your presence as we quietly and loudly pray to you. May we see in each other your light, your love, and you. May it not matter our differences, our names, our languages, our looks, and our way of doing things. May what matter today and every day be that we are one in you. And as we pray, we call to mind the many who are unable to be with us today, whether in body or spirit. May you bring comfort to those who are grieving, lonely, heartbroken, ill, or broken of spirit. May you strengthen those whose lives feel shattered, don't make sense, in crisis and experiencing loss. May you say the healing word to those who need it. May you bring the human touch of love to those who have not been touched. May you love the unloved through us. May you shine your light into those whose world is covered in darkness. May you use us to feed the hungry, clothe the ones who need clothes, give a cup of water to those who are thirsty, shelter the homeless, 
visit the sick and those in prison. May lives be awakened to you, Lord, to your love and to your kingdom, whose door is always open to all. Hear us now as we raise the concerns of our church family and community. Ongoing prayers for Bill Morrison, Brigham Cowan, for Denny Wurstler, Lori Lewis, for all babies in the NICU, for Kathy Collison, Frank Otterman, Grace, Lexi, Sue Kelly. Prayers ongoing for Ron Hopkins, Nikki and baby Theo, Sabrina, Lindsay Mitchum, Drew, Jeanette Brown, prayers for the Sen family, for Pam and Bob Adaska, Jim Smith, Joe Luciano, Tracy Price Brown, ongoing prayers for Janet, Charlene, Janet Smith, Michael Ferris, Greg and Lisa Lindgren, for Marty Johnson, Pat Hassler, for our church family members who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for all quarantined in nursing homes. And today we add our prayers for Pat Harper. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen, amen. Friends, as I mentioned and alluded to in our time of, as we proclaimed the word and meditated on the word, today is World Communion Sunday. Regardless of the displays that we have or don't have this year, we remember that communion is something that links us to the greater body of Christ. That at this table, we remember that this, the, the, the feast set here for us does not belong to North Springfield, but in fact is God's feast for all of God's people. And anyone who wants to know more about the grace of Jesus Christ is invited to participate in communion today. A note about how we are doing this, just a reminder, because we do it in the beginning of each month. You do have a individual communion set. There are two layers. The top layer is the bread, and then the second aluminum layer, that's the cup. After you are done today, if you will use the Ziploc bag that you were provided, to dispose of your uh, cup and the foil wrappers. Just package it in there, and then when you leave, just place it in the disposal. Those are just housekeeping. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. We tremble in these moments of uncertainty, of days which seem endless, wondering, is there any word for us? Remind us, Lord, that you spoke into the trembling emptiness of chaos, and your goodness and wonder began on those days and nights when hope raced across the sky, when grace bubbled up from springs, when peace wandered the meadows. All these gifts were and still created for those made in your image. And when we grumble in our wilderness or live in fear and worry or seek to have our way in every moment, when your people are alone, afraid, and feel abandoned, you send prophets to remind us of your promises and point us to the ways that you love us. Even in these months of isolation, even in these days which seem mundane, even in these moments when we feel alone, you are with us. You are known in the one that you sent to point us towards you. So with those who trembled at the foot of your holy mountain and with those who follow you, we join our voices and say that your word opens our eyes. Your word is our joy. Your word helps us to endure through every unbearable moment. Though others may mock us for trust in you, we continue to believe that we know your holiness in the hope that you share. And we realized how blessed we are by the grace we have received in Jesus. 
in these trying times when we wonder, Jesus is the one whose love pours out for each of us. In these days when bitter voices would seduce us with anger, Jesus is the gentle voice which calls us to trust in you. In these moments when people seem not to care for the most vulnerable, Jesus is the proof that death has no power, but your resurrecting love has the final word. We seek to model his gentleness and grace. We seek to let his light be revealed to us. And we ask that the mystery that we call faith in you, that you would pour out your spirit on these gifts of your bread and your cup, and that they would fill us so that we would share your grace, welcome the heartbroken, embrace the vulnerable. Teach us to imagine your promised feast, that in, this, in that place, that time, the life beyond this, where all hurtful words are silenced and there is no pain, where hope and grace are our closest friends. We will join with our hearts and voices singing, holy, holy, holy are you, God in community, three in one. Hear us now as we pray together the words you taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we remember as we gather today that on the night that he gathered with his disciples who he called friends, he took the bread and after he blessed it, he broke it saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and likewise he blessed it, he poured it saying, take, Drink, this is the cup of my covenant, poured for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. So every time that we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the mystery that we call faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. I invite you now to remove that top layer. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And as you are ready, this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. I invite you to pray with me using the words printed in your bulletin. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we have received greatly from the Lord. Let us now pray about how we might return those get from those gifts that we've been given to further the peaceable kingdom of God. This is the time of offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you create and call us, feed and sustain us, forgive and redeem us. We can never return to you that which you deserve. We pray to honor and glorify you with these gifts and with our entire lives. We present this offering as a tangible way of showing our love and loyalty to you. As tenants in your vineyard, we rejoice in being called to work with you in sharing your abundant harvest with the entire world you so love. Amen. For our benediction, I'll just read the words to that hymn aloud. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. As you go forward this week, may you be guided by the spirit of peace, the Holy Spirit which, which ushers you into a world that needs your presence now more than ever. And be conduits of the love you know from the Lord. Know that you are never alone, but that the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit goes with you now and always. Amen.